Have you ever wondered how to take care of your tree frogs properly? Have you ever wondered how to take care of a skink, especially a native species? Have you joined forums, Facebook pages, watched YouTube videos, and not been able to get the right answers or the ones you were looking for? I'm going to provide videos in this new show explaining how I take care of my pets, and this information could be very applicable to multiple species. So with that being said, let's get into today's pilot episode. Finally, in what has felt like an eternity, we have returned with new footage to show you of the animals of the PA Woods and Forest community. We'll get a chance to show you how this awesome enclosure was created and who lives in it. To spoil one of those, here we have the first look at Max, the seven-year-old female white tree frog who runs this 125 gallon like nobody's business. Before we show you her awesome enclosure, we have to take a step back and look at how this enclosure was designed. The goal of this show is to help you take care of your animals, so I wanted to design backgrounds for all the enclosures that you yourself could create. The idea behind this setup was going to be coconut baskets that were siliconed onto expanding foam and well you could see the silicone showed up a little bit too much so I had to pull all of the background down six feet of coconut basket and I had to start all over but after I was able to get it down right check this out guys without further ado here is the new enclosure featuring the dumpy family and the skink dynasty all of the wood you see in this scene here was from Josh's frogs it was reasonably priced and it looks amazing on a coconut basket background. It all blends in if you ask me. Let me reintroduce you to Pharaoh, the male southeastern five line skink. It's been a while since we've been able to feature him on the channel, but here is good signs showing how well he's doing. And this was the very first time I was able to capture him out after he was placed in this enclosure. We'll have a lot more footage on him in the days to come. It just was very difficult because when skinks have to change their environment, they're very hesitant to go out and be active like they once were. But we'll give you more information on him in the coming episodes. One of the best things that you can do as a pet keeper for frogs or lizards, whoever you're able to get your hands on, is to of course weigh your animals. See, this is a mixed species group environment, which means that if one animal is not eating, their weight is going to drop dramatically. So one of the best tips that I can give you for this first episode is to make sure that you get a gram scale and you're weighing your animals because you can tell immediately if one of them starts to decline, show symptoms of illness, show symptoms of stress, and it's just generally one of the best things that you can do. You could also see on the other side of things if your animal is becoming overweight. Now, Spurgeon and Jeremiah were very difficult to work with in this scene because I don't normally take them out and handle them like how I do for Max. So, you can see we'll have a lot of issues because they don't quite trust me or feel as comfortable as she does. But, moving on, aside from weighing your animals, there's something else that you could be doing that's also equally just as important, and that's telling the temperature and the humidity of your enclosure. This device was so important that I decided to sign up for the Amazon affiliate program and make this the very first product that I think you should buy if you're setting up an enclosure for either of these species or for any species that are related. So check out the description below for the Amazon affiliate link and remember, it doesn't cost you anything extra if you use that link to purchase this device or anything else that you want to buy on Amazon. However, it also helps out the channel and helps me supply my animals with food and all kinds of other stuff. Now, moving forward, this device is incredible. It's a gateway, which means that it has Wi-Fi capabilities and you're able to tell the temperature and humidity from wherever you are as long as you have service and your house has Wi-Fi. You're gonna be able to tell all of the temperature and humidity from hours to days to weeks to months, I think up into an entire year. 
this is a very exciting device, and I had to show you this because if I hadn't become aware of it, I would have been purchasing multiple hygrometers and thermometers and been going through all of that mess for things that might not even work because they might not be waterproof. Well, I have good news. This is 100% waterproof and the battery lasts for months. So if you're trying to have something in your enclosure that is consistent and you can rely on, this is the device for you. As I said, I can see the temperature and I can see the humidity as well as the enclosure that the specific remote is controlling. Here you can see the temperature and humidity as I'm scrolling through it and the more consistent it is, the better it is for your animals. You don't want them to have too inconsistent of highs and lows and humidity spikes and drops. You want to try to get it as consistent as possible and that's only going to happen if you have a device that's able to help you keep monitoring that. This is something greater than all of the reptile devices on the market because not only with it being outside of the box, it's something that you can monitor for weeks and months and you're able to dictate if there's a problem. You can set an alarm. It's just so much better than just having to be there and presently in the flesh see what's going on with your tank. You can monitor this from anywhere in the world as long as you have service in your house as Wi-Fi. I really think this could help save some animals if there's something that happens like a power outage or there's a heater that's on and it's too hot or if the humidity is just too low and you wouldn't have known. This is the perfect device so check that out on the Amazon affiliate link. Getting back to the whites, tree frogs, and the skinks inside the 125 gallon, we have a chance to see Max just enjoying being out at a late part of the night. You could see that it was misted, and we'll get into the devices for that down the road. But it's always incredible and exciting to me to see a happy whites tree frog late at night. It's always exciting to see Max. As you can see, she's waiting for me to feed her. And here, we have Jeremiah, the white's tree frog, the male. We get a chance to see both Max and Jeremiah out and about, just enjoying the enclosure, but also hunting because I misted, changed the water, and provided crickets for them to enjoy. We also have a third white's tree frog, and that's Spurgeon. He's a little bit more confident, a little more vocal than Jeremiah, and he seems to always be hanging around Max. As you can see, everybody seems to have their favorite spots in the enclosure. Max seems to patrol the ground, and the two boys seem to enjoy the top part of the enclosure, which I rarely see Max going up to. It seems like the perfect habitat, the perfect situation, and the right conditions with the humidity and temperature for these animals. I can't wait to show you what we have coming up in the future. But this tank isn't the only one in this episode. Get ready to see what the Grey Army's been up to. Observe their new enclosure, and we'll check out some ways on how we can take care of native tree frogs. Like, subscribe, and share with your friends. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.